iPhone 16 officially going on sale today as concerns grow over demand. Uh, for more on what's next for Apple and the industry, let's bring in Tony Fidel, former executive at Apple, inventor, uh, co-inventor of the iPod, co-inventor of the iPhone. Tony, great to have you back. Haven't seen you on air in a bit. I, I want to ask you about the the sort of math possibilities b behind uh, a Qualcomm Intel matchup. But let's start. <laughs> let's sure. start on AI. Um, what's special? One of the things that's special to me about your career is the way you had to reimagine interfaces for new ways of working with digital devices. General Magic, you know, iPod, iPhone. What kind of moment, Nest, what kind of moment is AI right now? Well, John, thanks for having me. Well, right now what AI is really about is we're going to see a dramatic change in how we do many different things. It's not just a, we're seeing these chatbots. We're seeing about talking to chatbots and getting answers to them. But AI can do so much more and has done so much more in many of our, our applications for the last 10, even 15 years. At Nest, we were actually, we had AI inside of our thermostat, still do, to actually change your temperature. So AI has been around a while. We just have had these you know, chatbots over the last two years. But what's more important is that you're going to see AI, not just as chat, but you're going to see AI actually helping to change the applications you use to make them much more personalized for the, app, uh, for the features you use, as opposed to just a, a whole wall of tools and you have to figure out what to do. Mm. So you're going to see the applications on iPhone and other smartphones and, and your desktop computer start to change based on how you use them. And we've had AI type features in the software in these devices, as you mentioned, for years now, but it's significant to me, now there's a button. Right. Once you start building it right. into the interface that way, you're making a long term bet. Right. Like if you're Apple or if you're, you know, Alphabet, Google, Amazon, et cetera, once you start putting it in a button, you're really in competition to make it simplest, easiest to use for consumers. Absolutely. And, you know, those buttons have existed. There was Siri before. There was Alexa. There was, you know, the different uh, Hello Google. Those things have been out for over, you know, eight, eight years or so now, nine, ten years. And so now what you're going to see is a whole new level of, of, of capabilities that was never, was always imagined, but never been able to deliver until now. And we're, we're just about there. Obviously, Apple hasn't been shipping those features yet. They're going to, they say, sometime next year, early next year. But there is the problem. And you can see if you actually create products around AI and chatbots, you can actually do some really novel and innovative things. And those buttons are going to be very powerful. Mm. I, I realize that the actual software for Apple intelligence isn't going to push out to a little bit later this year. I, mean, I was in Manhattan. I walked past the Apple Fifth Avenue store earlier today. I saw some of the lines. People are excited about the new iPhone 16, it would seem, on day one. Uh, but do you think, what do you think it's going to take for consumers to really understand, get excited, and wrap their arms around all of these capabilities as they do push out to their phones? Well, great question. How it always happens is that you're going to have a trusted friend, you know, that person in your family or, or in, your, in your community who you always go to and you say, hey, what do you think about this? And those, those tastemakers, those influencers, those are the ones who are going to really get you, you know, going when they can show you it right on their phone and go, check this out. This is so cool. That's the thing that's going to spread the waves. We're going to see lots of ads. We're going to see a lot of things. But when you see people around you that you trust using it and using it for everyday things, Things, that's when the when that fire is going to light and it's going to spread. So I'm I'm really uh, curious to see what's going to happen earlier next year because Apple has really wrapped the AI technology, chatbot technology, and other technologies, AI diffusion models and things, in something that's really a product. A lot of things like ChatGPT and the other things, they're not products. They're general technologies, but not wrapped as a product. Apple has done a really good job of messaging that they're going to have it as such. And so let's see what happens early next year. Okay. So what do you think the lessons learned have been for Apple as it does push out the software through its new iPhones? When you think about Huawei and what we're seeing with that rollout in China right now with its newest devices, and you think about the lead that, that Google-enabled devices have as well. Well, look, Apple has an incredible uh, market power. They have a, a consumer base that keeps coming back and back and back year after year. I don't think you know, you're going to see a real dramatic change in that as long as Apple 
is able to deliver as they say they can, and I believe they can, and the others will deliver. So I think it's still everyone's, it's the same arms race that we've had for the last, you know, 15 years in smartphones. And so it's just going to continue. But I don't think any one has uh, any more uh, advantage than anyone else. And so, uh, and Apple's always really good at making products out of technology. So let's see what happens. But I, I don't think there's going to be a huge market shift because people who are already in each of the platforms are going to stay that way.